All right. I hope you guys are doing well. So again, we're going to have a quiz tomorrow and uh, I'm going to go through the rest of the notes Wednesday, Thursday. And um, well, I might have a lesson for tomorrow too, just so that we can get through this chapter. And when you return, we're going to have the final chapter test. Okay. And that will be it for the semester. So I want to go over the assignment from yesterday real quick. And I want to go uh, you know, over freedom assembly, a few court cases that you know resembles that, and and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that and kind of relate it to what happened last Wednesday, a little bit, not much, because again, I don't want to talk about that too much since it's obviously you, you see it on social media. I'm sure every time you open it, right, newspapers, you name it. So, real quick, okay, uh, no bell ringer for today. Again, I just want to review over the assignment from. From Thursday, well, no, Friday it was, sorry. Okay, so read each of the following actions. Determine which you think would require a permit, which would probably be against the law, and which would be held with no limitations at all. Explain your answers. So one, hold a march on Main Street protesting the treatment of workers at a local company. So since it's on Main Street, since it's a, a uh, you know, a travel route, obviously, for many businesses, people, uh, you name it, and especially if there's ever an accident, you know, obviously fire trucks, ambulances need that that waypoint, that that direct movement, right? So they would need a permit, okay? They would need a permit in order to try to protest, obviously, workers at a local company, uh, the treatment of workers for a local company. So that would require a permit because you're on a local road. Again, ambulance, fire trucks that need to use it if in case of an accident or something like that. They would need a permit for that. Two, hold a demonstration in the company's employee cafeteria. Or cafeteria sorry. So um, this would be something, uh, you know, obviously it's in a company and uh, in a business. And obviously the, you know, the people have a right to talk about a meeting depending on what it might be. Uh, and uh, this would, I don't think you'd need a permit for this, but you'd obviously need to talk to the company about it and express what you're trying to do because if it's let's say if some workers are late to work or late to their job depending if it's after lunch or whatever it might be uh, that company would need to know about it because some workers might not be on the line or back to their shift at that appropriate time so uh, you know this would be something that could happen after work you know during lunch break um, anytime that it's not scheduled during work time. And obviously it needs to follow the contracts too of whatever the workers signed. So in this certain case, I don't think you need a permit from the community for this, but I, I do think that words need to be displayed and presented to the, the, the company in that business of, you know, what's going on so that work is not, you know, obviously you know, these workers not laid on a line, whatever it might be. All right, so they need like the approval of the business supervisors, uh, leaders, you name it. Three, invite company officials to a meeting at a group member's home. No permit needed at all because it's on private property. It's on someone else's home where they can discuss and go over some of the issues that they might have, you know, obviously at, at that company. So no permit needed. It's at a personal home, private, private property. Four, demonstrate on the sidewalk in front of the company's headquarters. Uh, this would need a permit because uh, sidewalk, again, people using this to travel, uh, you know, public transportation, uh, you know, this would be something that is demonstrated just in case it goes out in the street, right? Uh, you can't stop the flow of traffic. So in this case, you would definitely need a permit because it's public property. Uh, the sidewalk's not owned by a private entity or anything like that. So, yes, you would need a permit for that. Five, place job applications forms on the cars of company management officials as a form of protest, suggesting that management is disliked and should apply for a job at another company. This is something that, I mean, if it's something that you're trying to help with charity-wise, and I won't see a problem with it, but a car is someone's private property. Uh, you would need the approval of that person to... You know, ex obviously express your opinion about a certain matter. In this case, job applications for another job, I mean, this would be something that could cause issues to many people. 
And it's almost to a point where you need the approval of that person before you place something on their private property like their car. So again, I think you need some sort of um, you need some sort of approval by that person before you actually do that and put it on a car because again, it's private property. It's like placing something in your yard or in your house or on your house. It's it's something that you need approval for. Okay, there you go. Freedom of assembly worksheet. Please turn that in if you haven't done so already. If it's late, you're losing some points, but I'll give you partial credit. Okay, here we go. Moving on. Where are we at here? Where are we at? So assembly. Freedom of assembly. There you go. So we talked about freedom of assembly a little bit, um, obviously on 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 Friday, and I want to just go over a few court cases where freedom of assembly is uh, you know maybe restricted in some cases, especially in the 30s. Right, it's almost never ending with a lot of these issues dealing with socialism, communism uh, during the times of you know before World War II, even after World War II, uh, a lot of these forms of freedom of speech were challenged. So in Dijon versus Oregon, 1937 case, the court extended the right to freely assemble to protect the right of individuals to freedom of association. Individuals may freely join a political party, interest group, or other organizations. So Dijon, he was forming a peaceful, um, I guess you say, assembly with uh, people that had similar beliefs on the communist form of government. And they were talking, disputing about their these sort of things, and and it really alarmed many people of Oregon to the point the community came together and said, we need to try to break this up because this could cause a lot of issues with our government. This could cause a lot of issues with violence and rebellions. OK, and they didn't want something like what happened, uh, you know, with labor union strikes, uh, different types of violent protests over, you know, uh, the treatment of workers. And uh, in many cases, they thought that this could cause a lot of violent uprisings and violent protests. So Dijon was actually um, arrested, and Oregon actually upheld it. They thought, you know what, this was rightful. We broke up the assembly because they're going to cause some sort of violence out in the streets with their groupings. But, hey, it was peaceful. It doesn't make sense. So the Supreme Court took it. Right? They appealed it, and the Supreme Court allowed Dijon to meet with fellow members of this communist group to discuss and go over some of their interests and their beliefs on communism. So with that, again, uh, you know, De Jong thought that this was, or, or sorry, the Supreme Court thought that De Jong was peacefully protesting. He's allowed to do that. He's allowed to assemble with these people as long as it's peaceful, as, not, as long as it's not inciting any type of violence or hostility. All right, so protecting assembly and disorder, here we go again. Heckler's veto is a term used to describe when the public vetoes the free speech and assembly rights of unpopular groups by claiming that demonstrates will result in violence. Okay, so um, very similar to what we're going over with, you know, you know last Wednesday with a you know, speech given by President Trump and, uh, you know, how it was – you know, social media, how that was explained on social media, which – it, it it's one of those things I don't want to discuss and talk about too much. But um, again, this was believed that he was inciting violence and told many of the rioters to march on the Capitol Hill, which maybe wasn't placed in his own words. I mean, I, again, I'm not talking or discussing about this more than, than I have to, but just trying to make it a resemblance here with what's happening. And, uh, you know, that's why his social media is expelled again, because they're trying to prevent, any type of hostility or violence that might arise from freedom of speech. So Fire vs. New York established that police may disperse demonstration and limit the freedom of assembly if it threatens the peace. Supreme Court ruled that the First Amendment protected free speech, but not the right to use speech to incite a riot. So Finer, uh, he was, he was uh, in New York explaining a little bit about racial issues in the 1950s, and uh, it was to a point where he was really mocking police authorities, and uh, he was trying to incite a racial uprising in the streets of New York. And the authorities caught wind of this, heard the, the speech he was expressing to the people of New York. Uh, it was only a group of about 50 to 80 people, um, obviously pretty large, but not, nothing to the point of thousands of people. 
and uh, the authorities arrested him on site. And they said, hey, you're trying to incite violence. You're trying to try to cause some sort of violence on the streets and hostility. So they arrested him. And Feiner tried to argue and said, hey, this is going against my freedom of speech. This is going against uh, the 14th Amendment as well, the process. So uh, this is um, really taking away some of my rights. But the court upheld it. The Supreme Court took it and said, listen, you're trying to incite violence. You're trying to incite some sort of hostility on the streets. OK, and uh, this was not obviously welcome by uh, the authorities and the Supreme Court. So they ruled against Finer and they upheld his conviction because he was trying to incite violence. And again, I mean, with today's world, with the you know Black Lives Matters protests and riots over the summers and, and all over the summer and uh, just what was going on just past Wednesday, uh, the Capitol Hill storming, there's a lot of discrepancies amongst people of what's, you know, what's inciting violence or who's inciting violence. Um, are these words and actions allowed by public officials and people of these, these groups? And again, there's big question marks. Uh, again, I, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, repercussions dealt not only on one side, but the other of these forms of inciting violence and riots. So, We'll see how it shakes out. I mean, we might see it repeat as Finer versus New York. We might see a new precedent set. Who knows, right? Who knows? Okay. Uh, so what does freedom of petition allow the citizens to do? So petition, formal document by the community, all uh, right, by, uh, you know, that, uh, that area to allow these people to petition, to form an assembly, to express their freedoms or opinions, right? Um, and this allows, this jurisdiction allows these people to do so. So in a free country, we punish men for crimes they commit, but never for the opinions they have. And with Truman, actually, with the Finer case, that's who Finer was kind of arguing against Truman and his mistreatment of certain races, especially African Americans in society during that time in the 1950s. And uh, with the petition, this allows for the these groups of people to come together and to express their opinions and to assemble and, uh, you know, allows them to, uh, you know, really peacefully protest their thoughts as long as it's not inciting violence. Okay, there you go. We'll talk about more of this tomorrow, okay, after the quiz. So, again, you'll have your quiz, but then I want to talk a little bit about some of this, uh, these things so you can have enough, all the information for you for the test on Monday. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you around. There it is. Yep.